Is there anybody in the room, you still have some room left for some goals and some dreams? All right, so here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to write that down for me. All right, I want you to write that down for me. All right, now, now remember, the goal is execute, execute, execute. All right, so here's the, here's the challenge that I have. So there, there, there are two groups of people walking the earth. All right, you got, you got one group right now. Now, both groups have these dreams and these goals. Both groups from the time that they were young saw things on television, read things in books. They physically saw people doing things. And it was like, yo, I want to do that. Like, I want that. I, I remember being a kid, you know, and I used to watch the Brady Bunch. And I used to be like, yo, I want a family like that. I, re I, re I remember watching it. See, my mom had me. She got pregnant at 17 with me. I didn't really start talking to my biological father, like literally having a conversation with my biological father until I was 30. So as a child, because I didn't have that, you know, traditional home, I remember looking at the Brady Bunch going, I, I want, I, I remember, oh, leave it to Beaver. Oh, leave it to Beaver. Like, I just was like, the, you know, as a, as Cleavers, like they just had it going on. You know what I'm saying? They never like really argued. You know what I'm saying? Like they worked everything out. Everybody like had roles and responded. It was just, they were great. Right? And so I, I remember growing up, like, yo, one day, like this is my this is my reality. But one day, one day I'm gonna have a family just like leave it to Beaver. Like I remember saying it to myself. And I, I remember friends, like they want to drive these kind of cars and leave in these type of neighborhoods. I wasn't really thinking about that kind of stuff. I was just like, you know what? Like one day, I just want to have a happy family. Like I want to come home and I want my kids to like run up to me, dad. When they get older, I want them to be proud of me. Right? I just had these dreams. I'm going to put my kids through college. They're not going to have to pay for college. I'm going to put them through college. Like they're going to go to, you know, these big colleges and whatever. And I just had, I had dreams. Right? I had dreams. And so what I want you to do for me is I want you to, and I know a lot of you are adults and you, you got, you're, doing, you're adulting and, and sometimes you don't have time for dreams and goals and stuff, right? But I want you to do me a favor, like don't let life do you like that. Like don't let life put you in a circumstance or a situation where you stop dreaming. Like don't let life put you in a situation where you are helping somebody else make their dreams become a reality that you forgot you have your, your own. Like don't, don't do that. Don't, don't get so caught up giving some job 30, 40, 50, 60 hours of your day that you don't have any time left for yourself. And so what we're going to do right now, we're going to get back to the basics. Right? We're going to get back to, and, you know, I wake up every day and people say, yo, E, what's the, like, what's the thing? I know you say execution, but like, what's that thing? And it's like to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion. Like, no, no, no. When I wake up every day, like, I claim that, that, that the first commandment was I was commissioned to be fruitful, to multiply, and to have dominion. Like, that's what I was commissioned to do. Like, that was, that's the command. And so I want you to write down those dreams and goals that you still have that you have not accomplished. I want you to write them down. And so do me a favor, I don't, I don't want reality right now. I'm not interested in how much your student loans are. I'm not interested. Because your student loans are sucking your dream. I'm not interested right now. And I got a divorce and right now I just can't. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Eric, I lost a child and you don't know what it's like to. I'm not, I'm not interested in your reality right now. I, I, I want you to get back to your dreams. I want you to get back to your goals because no matter what has happened in life, you've got another 30 years, another 40 years, another 50 years, like you can't get stuck on, like you can't let that thing that devastated you in 1989, the thing that devastated you in uh, 1996, 2001, like you can't wake up every day to 2001. 2001 was a tragedy, yes it was, but you can't stay there. You can't keep waking up to that. I got, you got to wake up to your dreams and go, look, I always tell people, we all go through pain, get a reward for yours. You know, we all go through pain. We all go through pain. We all go through something. We all go through our go-through. I wouldn't have time to tell you about all the trauma that I went through in my life. But I just figured since I went through so much trauma, 
I might as well use the trauma to make all my dreams become a reality. So you got my homie that called me the other day. Like we had, a, I'm like, yeah, I'm, this is blowing my mind. I'm like, God, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. Like, I don't know why you calling me and you're not getting personal development from me. No, listen to what I just said. This is my best friend in the whole wide world. Listen to me very close. Like this is the dude I trust with my wife and my kid. Like this is the person that my dreams, like he helped me with my dream. I said, why are we on the phone talking about deficits right now? Why are you doing that? Do you know Do you know people who don't know me and I'm not their best friend in the whole wide world have gone through one of my programs and now they're killing the game and you know me and you're not killing the game? So we're on the phone. I'm like, yo, God, do me a favor. Like, can we stop talking about your reality? I'm not interested. I'm like right now in marital bliss and you're trying to bring me back to divorce. Are you talking about your marriage and where it ain't? I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm in bliss. So don't, don't bring me there. You, I'm, I'm, I'm a multimillionaire. You talking about you ain't making no, you're not making enough money to take care of you. I don't want to talk about that talk. Can we talk about your dreams and goals and get to them? So we're having a conversation, right? And so I said, look, stop, just stop, right? Just tell me, what are your dreams and goals? You're like, you know, to be a multimillionaire, to do this with my wife, take care of my kid. Look, look, I want you to look at your goals and I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you know what it takes to make that happen? Like, do you, like, like, literally, like, because this is all it's going to take. Three things, it's all it's going to take. Do you know what it takes? Look, the only thing it takes to go from where I went to, a homeless, high school dropout, sleeping in abandoned buildings, eating out of trash cans. I went from being a high school dropout, getting a GED to having a PhD. Listen to me, the only thing it takes is knowing what it takes. So one day I woke up and was like, okay, E, stop talking about what you don't have. You need to know what you don't know so you can get to where you're trying to get to. Listen to me, guys. I'm real simple. The first thing I'm going to ask you, do you know what it takes? That's it. Now, if you know what it takes, that's great. You mark it off. And I remember before being in that room with Warren Buffett, I never even thought about, I never even thought about making that kind of money. I never thought about making money, but I was sitting in the room with Warren Buffett. So I get in the room with Warren Buffett and what blows my mind is that he's human. Look, there are those of you who watch people on TV and you go, oh, and you admire them and you love them. And some of you watch so much TV because you really want to live your dreams through somebody else. You're not ready to do the work. Real, so you watch it on TV so you can get inspired. And so I, Warren Buffett, everybody's sitting down, Warren Buffett walks in the room, and when Warren Buffett walks in the room, it blows my mind. I'm like, yo, this dude is human. Like, he didn't come in with an Italian suit on. He came in with like a normal, I'm like, that's a normal suit. You know what was so crazy? He could wear a Sears and Robux suit because he was already one of the richest men in the world. He didn't have to come in and impress nobody. He didn't have to come in and prove that he was rich because we know he rich. I'm like, what, a, what an amazing feeling. Like, you can be your authentic self. Like, Warren Buffett didn't have to come in because some other guys came in and they, was, they, they had their suits that he didn't have on. And they had the million-dollar watches that he didn't have on. And they had the shoes that he wasn't wearing. He had a normal tie on. He didn't have it all the way up. He didn't have a Pat Riley, like, cut. The, he didn't, it was just a normal button-up. And he came in the room and he like he's not GQ. So he wasn't trying to act like he came in to give financial advice. And I sat there listening to this man talk and I was like, whoa, my mom worked for Ford. She later got married. The person that became my father worked at GM my whole life. I never heard that conversation before. I had only heard the working class language. It was a different language. And I walked out of that room, was like, yo, I know what it takes. So being successful is not who you are, it's what you know. So I need to get a different relationship to knowledge. So you're in this room and we've been here for a few days. We did not come here to be entertained. You did not come here to get pumped up. And I'm telling you, I'm hype right now. So I'm hype, but I did not come here just so you can get pumped up or get hype. You have been given information. You are, you are this close to making every dream you wrote down happen, why? Because you have been taught by the best of the best. You have been taught by the best of the best. 
You've been taught by people who've been doing this for years. You've been taught by people who love you and care for you. People who are giving you information that you're not going to get randomly on your own. You are getting 10, 20, 30 years of experience in an hour. And so you are this close to your dreams and goals. So I, I have to ask you the question. You have the information. Now what are you going to do with it? You have the information. I sat in a room with Warren Buffett. Listen to me very closely. You type my name in. And this is by the glory of God. You type my name in. And it's going to say something. You put my name in Google. Something's going to come up. I come from working class parents, but when I left that room with Warren Buffett, I became a multimillionaire and I never had to talk to Warren Buffett ever again. I didn't have to call Warren Buffett and ask him, now what did you say again? I took the information that I was given and I murdered it. What do you have today that you've never had before and what are you going to do with it? You have enough information right now that if you never got any more information, you have enough to make everything you wrote down become a rap. Here's the challenge though. The challenge is not what you know. It is not what you've learned today. The challenge is what you knew before today. I'm gonna say it slower because it's the simplest thing I'm ever gonna say. What you already know is why you are where you are. And if you're going to get to the next level, you're going to have to erase everything you knew about what you knew, what you thought you knew. I'm going to say it again because I see some people like, whoa, Eric, I'm trying to catch that one. It is the stinking thinking that got you where you are right now. It is the limited beliefs that have you where you are right now. You have a limited belief. I remember that I thought I could never do this, but only for people who look like me. I remember, I remember when I was like 19, 20 and I started speaking, 20, 21, and I would go to historically black colleges and I would kill it. And I remember somebody asking me not to do historically black, but to come out of my particular community, my particular way of speaking, my particular way of doing things. And I'm thinking to myself when I first got there, I was like, whoa, I don't know if I could do this. Like they don't come from where I come from. Like they don't talk like I talk. Like they don't have the experience that I had. I don't know if I have anything to say. And God said to me, you what? I'll never forget talking to Les Brown and Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor, Les Brown was like, yo, you're the number one motivational speaker in the world. I wasn't even a number at that time. He said, you're the number one motivational speaker in the world. And I remember, I'm not going to say it out loud, but I remember how the conversation started. I actually named somebody that I thought was number one. And he said, how dare you say they name out loud and say they number one. You're the number one motivational speaker in the world. And you better not ever say they number one. You're number one. And I said, hold up. Why? But I, I just started speaking. He says, no one on the planet is giving free information away like you giving free information away. Nobody in the planet loves people the way. There's no other motivational speaker going to prisons. There's no other motivational speaker talking to 12 kids in a detention center. There's no other motivational speaker going to schools and shaking kids' hands on their way to school and not getting paid a dime for it, meeting them at 6.30 saying, good morning. He said, you are the number one motivational speaker in the world because nobody cares about humans like you care. He said, you ain't even charging. Boy, you know how much money you should be charging? Bob Proctor said, how much you charge? I was like, ah, about five, ten grand. He was like, what? Bob Proctor said, what? I was like, five, ten grand. It was right here in Phoenix when we spoke together. He said, don't you ever do that again. No less than 20,000. I went back and told my secretary, I was like, look, look, man, I talked to Bob Proctor. He said, no less than. I had to fire her from that position and give her another position because she couldn't say 20,000 when people called I'm being real. She couldn't say it. She, she, when she said it, she didn't say it like she believed it. And so people would be like, nope, bring it all the way down. And then CJ was like, let me say it, because I've been with him. I see him at the schools. I see him at the prisons. I see him at Michigan State doing program for kids every week when the te they don't even want him doing it. Let me tell him, 20,000. And if you don't, CJ would say 20,000. If you call me tomorrow, it's going to be 25. No, you're not hearing what I'm saying. And so I remember I got a couple of 20s, went back, told Bob Proctor, like Bob Proctor. 
I got, he was like, how you doing, Eric? I'm like, great. How is it going with the fine? I was like, man, it's great. I'm doing 20 now. He was like, Psh. I said, you told me 20. He said, I never told you 20. I said, no, less than 20. But your limited beliefs heard. Your limited beliefs heard you say, I didn't say that. That's what you, I, that's what your past told you. That's what you getting a GED told you. Your biological father not being in your life told you. Because you don't value yourself. You think it's tough. I'm telling you, son, there are people in this earth that value you more than you value yourself. They look to you in a way that you don't look to yourself. You will not get what you're supposed to get until you value yourself and you kill all your limited beliefs. So I need you to do me a favor. Just write it down because you don't have enough paper but write down your limited beliefs and when you get home, I need you to address them. He said, Eric, I used to be like, God, I don't know if I could do corporate. He said, son, I need, not only can you do it, I, I, you must do it. You're gonna, you're gonna bring something that nobody else is bringing. And I was like, what do I bring that nobody else is bringing? He said, that message that you think isn't important, is so important. And guess what message I was bringing to corporate? I was bringing, so you're a seven figure earner, but you're not a seven figure dad. God was like, do you know how important this message is? Just because you're not talking money like they talking money, this has nothing to do with it. You just told my man that he need to be a second-figure spouse. He's not a seven-figure spouse. He's one-dimensional. He knows how to make money, but the rest of his life sucks. Challenge him to get the triple-double life. Challenge them to get the trouble. Yes, you've invested in stocks and bonds, but you ain't invested into your wife. You've invested into the stock market, but not your kids. And your son is in a gang because the gangs is beating you. Oh, you're killing it at the company, but when you come home, you're not killing it with your child. That's why your daughter was somebody she shouldn't be with. That's why your daughter wants to commit suicide because her daddy ain't giving her the attention that she needs. So do me a favor. I just want you to give your company, this, don't, like don't stop giving your company that attention, but I challenge you to give your wife the same energy that you're giving your company. 